We received quite a letter. I couldn't shorten it, so I'll read it to you in full. I saw your video yesterday about a guy who wrote you a heartfelt letter telling you that he was sick and how worried he was about his father who wanted to help him. Thank you for responding to such letters. Thus, I decided to write you. I have Alzheimer's, although I'm only 47 years old. Mostly old people suffer from it, but somehow I got into that small percentage of young people, so there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not complaining. I've been watching your videos for a long time. I understand that everything is in the hands of the creator, nor do I care what happens to me. Truly, only one thing concerns me. I don't want to be a burden to my family because everything is coming down to this. I know what's in store for me, immobility, dementia, there's no cure for this disease, which means everything falls on the shoulders of loved ones. Right now, I've locked myself in my room to write you. I saw my wife crying in the kitchen, my son consoling her. I'm still in decent shape, but the disease is progressing. Another year, two, three, and I'll weigh everyone down. I do not want that. What should I do? Should I end my life? I know it would be terrible for my wife, but on the other hand, she's still young. I don't want to be dragging her into old age. We used to dream about the future, and a lot of it came true. Help me figure out what to do while I still can think and remember something. I have faith in you, and you are doing such great work. From a medical point of view, I would advise him to walk a lot, a whole lot. Also to listen to and read scientific materials, that is to challenge his brain. Moreover, if he knows our materials, then to delve into them as much as possible. And this would be... This will reverse the direction. He will heal himself. Let me ask this. Can a person not become a burden? As you said, he delve into these materials and not think about his health, let's say. He will delve into our materials and if he lives in them, everything will change. He won't be a burden to others? He will not be a burden to others, definitely. Meaning this life will radiate in him no matter what state he is in? Yes, of course. Will his loved ones not feel him as a burden? They will feel this from him. That he is preoccupied with his work, withdrawn, as they say, absorbed in his tasks, that he walks a lot, thinks a lot, exercising both his body and his mind, and gradually, gradually, he will prevail in some way and be able to stop the progression of this disease. I have another question. If this is really as he describes it, such a state of mutual love, mutual support, and so on, when a person is in such a state, is it possible to keep at least this spark of love and connection, no matter the state one may be in? Yes. But he has a different problem. He's worried about others, not himself. Yes, that's right. So he feels bad about it, regretting being a burden for them. There's nothing you can do. There are possible objective reasons he will not be able to overcome in any way, and then he may only have thoughts of leaving his life. Is it wrong? This is wrong. Wrong. So why are such thoughts, such states, given to a person from above? Please tell me. To correct the soul. Whose? His or the loved ones? His soul and theirs, his friends, acquaintances, relatives. We live only for the correction of the soul, not for the correction of the body. Our body lives and dies. That's how it is. This is our animal level. But we have to think about the next level. If we realized this is so, that everything is given to us for the correction of the soul, how would our worldview change? We would have a different purpose in life to elevate our soul. Then our whole life would be aimed at a different goal. It would have a different meaning. We would exist in a completely new framework. We would treat each other differently. We would live differently. It would change everything. What would an incurable disease turn into then? It's quite possible that he would simply understand that this is not a disease, that this is the natural end of corporeal life, meaning of the body. It exists for a certain period of time in order to allow the soul to develop afterwards. What does it do to a person? Does it give him some freedom? Of course. Everything happens completely differently. I'll ask you one last question. I didn't plan on it, but it suddenly occurred to me. Your teacher's wife could not move for five years. She was practically paralyzed. Yes. And I know as you told us, they loved each other very much. True. How did he feel and how did she feel about what was happening? She couldn't do anything. She couldn't even talk. Right. She was completely paralyzed and he took care of her and did everything he could. It's incredible when an 85 year old man, a man at that age, 
takes care of his paralyzed wife. Was it because of their connection? Was this the only reason? Yes. They loved each other. You're saying the word loved. That's how it is? It wasn't simply a habit of 50 years of life. It really was love. How did they get to such a state? Well, these were elevated souls. Very elevated souls. 